I want you to watch the ball. Watch the ball while it's in the air, after I let it go, before it hits my hand down here, while it's coming down. So watch it after I let go, before it hits my hand, while it's coming down. What are the forces? Are there any significant forces on the ball after I let it go and before it hits my hand? Okay? So if you look at the thing while it's falling and ask yourself, what are the significant forces on it? First question you might ask, is there a significant gravitational force on the ball? And there is. We call it the weight of the ball. So here's the weight of the ball. That's the first significant force. What other forces are there on the ball while it's falling? Well, there's undoubtedly some air friction as it falls. This will have to be represented as a kind of small force. Let's uh, agree among ourselves that probably the air friction is insignificant. It, for a ball falling that fast, it's very small drag force on the ball. And so, even though it's really there, let's for the moment uh, agree that it's very small and therefore treat it as an insignificant force. And ask ourselves again, what are the significant forces on the ball? This one, then, we will discard as insignificant because it doesn't make much difference. Well, we've still got gravity. Are there any other significant forces on the ball? Well, when we ask ourselves what other things are touching it or pushing on it, we don't see any other objects touching or pushing on it, so we conclude that there's one single force, this force of gravity, acting downward. Is the motion of the ball, given that there's one force, is the motion of the ball uniform motion or accelerated motion? Well, if there's a single unbalanced force, the motion is accelerated. And so as it falls, it speeds up. The acceleration of that, small, of that uh, falling ball is about 35 kilometers per hour each second. So that if you drop it from rest, after one second, it's going 35 kilometers per hour. After the second second, it's 70 kilometers per hour. The acceleration is 35 kilometers per hour each second. Okay? And there's one significant force causing that acceleration. Now watch the ball again. Only this time, watch it after it leaves my hand, but before it reaches the top, while it's moving upwards, like that. Okay? After it leaves my hand, before it reaches the top. If we ask ourselves again, what are the significant forces on the ball while it's moving upwards? Then we identify first that there's a gravitational pull on the ball. We would probably also say there's a frictional force with the air, a drag force, but that's insignificant. If we look for any other forces on the ball while it's moving upward, we wind up with just one. Now sometimes when people say, well, your hand, your hand is a force on the ball. But as soon as the ball leaves my hand on its way up, I could take my hand out of the room, out in the hallway, and the ball wouldn't know whether my hand was there or out in the hallway. The hand doesn't exert a force on the ball as soon as the ball leaves the hand. So when it's going up like that, the hand is not exerting a force on it as soon as it leaves the hand. So we wind up again with one significant force, the same significant force that we had when the ball was falling. If we were to throw the ball and it left our hand going up at 70 kilometers per hour, then after one second, it would be going 35 kilometers per hour. After the second second, it would reach the top. After the third second, it would be coming down with 35 kilometers per hour speed. And finally, after the, second, or the fourth second, it would be down to 70 kilometers per hour, the speed with which it had left our hand. But again, going up or going down, there's just one significant force, the force of gravity. And the acceleration in both instances 
is in the direction of the net force. But what we learn from it is that when the acceleration is in the same direction as the motion, then we add the 35 kilometers per hour each second. But when the motion is opposite to the acceleration, then we subtract the 35 kilometers per hour each second. Well, there's only one other way to throw it. We've thrown it up, we've let it fall down. The only other way to throw it is to throw it sideways. <laughs> Consider the ball after it's thrown sideways. What are the significant forces on the ball? We identify again the force of gravity, which is a force downward. The air friction we uh, discard is insignificant. And again, come up with one significant force, the force downward. Is it reasonable then if that there's just this one single force downward that the ball as it moves sideways neither speeds up nor slows down sideways but with that same force that the ball either moving up or down experienced the ball would accelerate downward at 35 kilometers per hour each second even as it moved sideways neither speeding up nor slowing down. 